We have no time to lose, so let's jump straight in with update number one. And that is a good one. Notion Calendar now finally supports Apple Calendar. So if you have Apple Calendar as your backup, right, you can simply now go to Notion Calendar and then in the top right corner under your settings, you can then select now an Apple Calendar to sync over. There are a few more instructions there, right? You need to set up something in your Apple ID, but it's super smooth and works really well. And then your Google Calendar and Apple Calendar plus all the Notion stuff can live side by side in one app. Now I'm really excited about update number two, page verifications. Because previously that was only available on Notion wikis, right? This weird sub feature, which I'm not a fan of, right? You should not use wikis in your setup. If you're curious about that, let me know in the comments below, I'll do a video about it. But basically we have now this option, right? To verify pages and indicate that they are up to date also outside of it. These are available pretty much anywhere in your workspace, right? You'll see these little badges uh, pop up together with the icon and cover here at the top. And the way it works is pretty simple. The second I click on here, right? I can now say, okay, how long do I want to verify this for, right? For either one of the set timelines or indefinitely. And the second I do this, we see now, okay, at the very top, we get this blue verified checkbox. And we also see who verified, right? It's me. And I can change the owner. I can say, okay, someone else should be the owner of this, but by default, it will be whoever clicked here. Now, verification impacts a few things in your workspace. First, verified pages are prioritized in search results, right? So it makes it more likely that they show up at the top of your search. Second, they are prioritized by AI. So if Notion AI is looking for answers for a question, right, it will first go through verified pages, which again makes it easier for you, right, to guide and prompt uh, so that it like, you know, retrieves the current up-to-date um, company handbook, not an old one. And number three, it's also prioritized in ad mentions, right? So if you want to quickly mark something with ad, right, uh, the page verification one is more likely to show up. And you also see with this little blue checkbox, right, that this, um, you know, is a relevant item right here. Now, besides being just an option, right, in pretty much any page that you open, you can also add this verification to your databases, right? In general, I recommend that you keep, of course, most of your pages in Notion in databases, right? So in your wiki, and then what you can do is you can add this as a new property, right? So we can click on plus, and then we can now look on the verification. We can add this as a new property. When we do this, a few things happen. First, uh, we will get this new verification uh, property, right? Which behaves sort of like this top element, right? It's sort of the same settings. I can click in here and I can see, okay, this has been verified by a certain time. I can also use this then to filter, right? So I can, when I go to my filters, I can set verification, okay? Is verified, expired, and empty, right? These are new options that are not available on other properties. And you see that at the same time also creates this owner property. Now, I'm not a big fan of this. And that's because it will always create this, even though you might have already a property on your database, right? That indicates the same, right? I have page owner here already. Even if you have a property that's called exactly owner, right? It will create owner one. And again, right, this is suboptimal because in particular, if you have large setup already, you just want to dedicate a specific property. So I hope Notion soon changes this and we have a similar option, right, to the way it works for tasks, right? If you turn something into a task database, if I do this, right, it tells me, okay, what properties do I want to map, right? Which one should be the person who's the assignee, right? I can simply select this here. I wish they would also do this here, would be much better. Mainly because if I then later delete this property, uh, it also removes the owner property, right? So we sort of lose that information. Again, a, a UI pattern right, that I hope they remove. We had the same issue with subtasks for a long time. That has been fixed in the meantime, but just like two things to keep in mind. So while this is a great feature and super, super helpful, if you add it to your databases, you need to be a bit mindful about the process. As of today, page verifications are unfortunately only available though on business plans and enterprise. So not even on all paid Notion plans. Update number three is a quality of life update for anyone who's using Notion charts. Now, if you have a chart, you see this new option to click to view data. And if you do so, you'll see a specific view right, that is filtered down for all the entries in your database with well, that exact setup, right? So whatever you use in your chart to break things down, people can now with one click figure out, okay, what is actually information? So in this example, right, we have maybe some SEO articles and you want to visualize to the team, okay, how is it distributed across the board? And if your chart lives in a different place than the actual database, right, maybe there's a general health check for your whole company. Well, uh, leadership can now just click into the, for the data and see exactly, okay, this is what the team is working on. Update number four is for all project management fans that have really, really long deliverables. You can now have multi-year timeline views, right? So if you go to our timeline, you see that besides our option for month and quarter, we also now have the year option, right? And the option to even have a five-year horizon for our work, well, if you need really big picture for your stuff. Update number five brings more power to Notion Forms, more specifically, condition logic, which is really cool. So let's create a new view here, right? Go in, say new view, and we're gonna pick the form. Oops, well, actually here we need to pick it here. And we can just create some new uh, form from scratch. That's fine. Now we can so, so let's say submit, right, your design request, just as an example. Now we can have here now as, as a first question, right, we can ask them to uh, pick 
what, uh, you know, what is the request set? What specific asset do they want? And now what you'll see is if I go to the settings for the form, we have this option to add conditional logic. This is only available right now if you have a select or a multi-select property. So it's not available on just free form, right? So if I click on here, you see, I don't have the option to do this. But once you have a select or multi-select, we can go in and we can say, okay, add conditional logic. And now we see here below these options. And we can say, okay, based on which of the options is uh, selected, we can ask different things. So for example, for website asset, right, we could say, okay, uh, you know, like, uh, let's add, you know, what are, what are the um, specifics, uh, specific dimensions, right? Whatever it is that you need to ask for this specific question and so on and so on. And then you can add, of course, more options, right? You can say, go back in here and say, add more conditional logic, right? And then if something else is selected, you want to continue with these questions. Now, a few things to keep in mind with this feature. The first is that the conditional logic right now is fairly simple, right? You can only show new questions. So it's not like you can say, okay, if certain questions, things are tagged like height, properties, right? So you need to always build your logic from this point of view. Okay, what is the smallest number of questions that is answered everywhere? And then just show the specific ones based on your settings. Second limitation, as I mentioned already, right, only works currently with your select and multi-select properties, so also not with relations. So right, if you have um, this related to something else, and you want to, for example, for say, if a specific client is selected uh, in a client database, ask specific questions, that doesn't work. And the third limitation, which I think is the saddest one of them all, is that this is also a feature that is currently locked behind the business enterprise plan. If you see a pattern here, right, I think it's very clear that Notion is trying to add more specific value to the higher tier plans, but I hope they're reconsidering this because I think this is really a feature that would benefit everyone regardless on which plan you are, at least if you're on a paid plan, right? If you're on a paid plan, I think you should have access to conditional logic because it's quite essential. In the meantime, if you need a really, really good form builder, you can use my personal favorite, which is Tally, right? I still use it a ton in my business. I have a video with all the details for that link below in the description. Super, super powerful. They have amazing stuff, amazing free plan for all these powerful features. But of course, right, it's cool to see that Notion is giving forms a bit more love. And then we hopefully get a proper, you know, fully fledged form builder here soon. The next one is one for the power users and it's workspace webhooks. As you might know, Notion already launched like the individual webhooks, right, within your automation step. So you can say, okay, if something triggers, right, I want to send a webhook. But what you also have now is like these global workspace ones. You can create them through your integration settings, right? If you go to notion.so and then slash my minus integrations, where you can create your own API access tokens, right? You also have the option now, if you go create a new integration, you can say, let's just, you know, like select the workspace here. This is an internal one, perfect. And now, oops, yeah, this is like our, you know, video test, going to delete this afterwards. And then what we have here now as an option in the configuration settings is we can say webhooks. So you see here, I can say now that I want to receive webhooks via this, uh, you know, integration for certain events in my workspace. So right now we have certain, uh, we have a few limits to what we can do, but these are basically global things whenever something gets created. So for example, whenever a page content is updated, right, a page is created, pages deleted, these sort of like really global admin things, super, super useful. For example, right, what you could build with this is you can make sure that whenever in the Notion workspace a page is deleted or moved, right, or certain properties are updated in a database, you can, you know, get notified as an admin. So on the one hand, super useful for admins of large organizations. You want to keep tabs on what's happening and spot, you know, any issues like database deleted. That's a huge one, right? If you want to make sure that no one accidentally deletes relevant information, this is really useful. Or the same with, you know, like uh, certain common fields. And then on the other hand, of course, the current main use case for this is if you build any tools and apps around Notion, because it makes it much, much easier right now to get like real time updates from Notion whenever something changes there and you need to update your internal tooling. So I think what we can expect from this, even though, you know, the average user probably won't feel this update too much, is that we'll get a lot more apps built on top of Notion that feel a lot smoother because they get real time information rather, you know, than having to poll Notion every few seconds. Update number seven is for all the admins out here. If you are on an enterprise plan, you can go now in your Notion workspace setting to identity and you will see this new prompt to set up your organization. If you do this, you will be first prompted to verify your domain ownership. And after that, you get sort of this bird's eye control panel outside of Notion, right? Which kind of like looks over all your Notion workspaces. Basically, this means if you have an organization that has several Notion workspaces, you can manage them all from one single place. A common scenario might, for this might be if you, you know, have an organization that is so big that you have, you know, for certain subgroups of the company, right, they all might have their own Notion workspace and you want to make sure that certain shared settings are managed, uh, you know, across everything the same way. Previously, that meant that you had to be, you know, the workspace uh, owner in every single one of these workspaces. And if you wanted to change settings, for example, single sign-on, right, or things like um, the, the, you know, the, the general thing or like 
people can do in terms of security settings. You had to log into every workspace and do that individually. Now you can do it on a global level. This also means that Notion has now introduced a fourth level in their hierarchies. Right? We have now organization owners, which are the people that sit you know, outside and can really manage these settings on an organization level. We have workspace owners who are you know, the, the old super admins, the old ones that used to be able to do everything, but now organization owners might restrict some of the rights of workspace owners. Then we have the team space owners, right? Within one workspace, you can uh, integrate, <laughs> break it down further into team spaces. And then you have, of course, the individual members. So another puzzle piece, right? When it comes to setting up more complex enterprise structures and more uh, complex right uh, things. And I'm hoping that this is a strong hint, right? That we soon see also better permissions on a more granular level. So really exciting step if you know you're into the admin and organization side of things. With update number eight, we leave again the world of enterprise and come back to you know features for everyday users. And this one is page translation. Now, if you have a page in your Notion workspace that is not in the system settings of your workspace, right? Remember, on, in your personal account, right, you can set whether what language you want to use Notion in. And if you Notion detects a page that's in different languages, right, so mine is set to English. But now I have here this, you know, German version of an article that I wrote. Well, it will uh, tell you then that well, you have this option to translate into English. Right? We get this little bubble here at the top of the page. We also can go to the three dots if we want to, and we have this translate option here, and we can also translate to not just you know like English uh, as my default language, but I could also translate it into pretty much any other option or like a lot of other options, and then it will do this. And if I pick this option, right, the cool thing about it is it will first translate it, and then I can actually duplicate it to edit. So this is particularly useful for workflows where you have like any multi-language setups, right? You might have to create content in several uh, languages, and you want to, you know, quickly create different pages for it. And now Notion AI has this sort of built-in. Important to note, this is a Notion AI feature, right? So it uses Notion AI credits, which means if you don't have Notion AI unlocked in your workspace, you will only be able to do this so often until your free credits are used up. But if you are on a Notion Airplane, right, part of the usual package deal, and you can start translating things with a click. Important to know that this is still an early feature, right? So it translates all this body text. But if you have any databases or so on it, it won't be able to do that, right? I hope this comes in the future. We just have this one click option to, uh, you know, translate whole setups into another language, but it's still a bit off. Last but not least, update number nine is the Jira connector for Notion AI. Another really, really exciting feature. Now, Notion AI has gotten a lot more powerful than in the beginning. And in particular, these AI connectors are, I think, a real hidden gem. Now, if you use Notion AI, uh, you know Tune, right? Pretty much the best feature of AI. The quest ability to just ask any question in your workspace and getting information uh, answers back on it is great. And with AI connectors, Notion AI can also pull from other sources. So for example, in my company workspace, right, I have already connected it to Slack. So you see down here, right, if I ask any question, it will also go through my team's Slack to figure out, well, was there anything about this question? And besides, you know, Google and GitHub, we have now the fourth app, Jira, that it connects to. So if your product team also lives in Jira, right, you can also now have Notion AI answer questions based off that. I actually just released a huge Notion AI guide on my website. Link for that down in the description. I think it's gotten now to a point where if you run your business or your company in Notion, you should take a serious look at it because there are so many great use cases now on it for it that I think the ROI for most situations is really there. Again, have a ton of things here, right? So if you want to learn more, you can adopt it at your company, right? The first use case you should try out and so on and so on. Go check it out. It's really, really cool. A lot of stuff to learn in there. And yeah, that's it, I think, for the update report today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more Notion content and up in figure and excited also about AI, well, then check out this video next, right? Not about Notion AI, but about how you can use Notion in combination with another tool to create AI meeting briefings. Really, really cool if you need to prepare better for your next meetings with a lot of new people without checking LinkedIn all the time. Just click here and I'll see you in a second.